Hi there, Miss Barber here. I hope you're having a great day. This lesson is titled, How Derivatives Affect the Shape of a Graph. If it were up to me, I would say how derivatives reveal the shape of a graph. Let's begin with the definition. Let f be a function defined on an interval i. We say that f is increasing if f of x sub 2 is greater than f of x sub 1 whenever x sub 1 and x sub 2 are in the interval and x sub 2 is greater than x sub 1. We say that f is decreasing if f of x sub 2 is less than f of x sub 1 whenever x sub 1 comma x sub 2 is an element in the interval and x sub 2 is greater than x sub 1. Raise your hands if you have no idea what I just said. I can't see you, but I'm gonna assume a few went up. Let's look at what that means. We're gonna look at this graph that's provided to determine the intervals where the function is increasing, and that happens where the graph is rising, or where the function is decreasing, that happens where the graph is falling. Let's begin with looking for where the graph is rising. We say that the graph is rising if you move on the graph from the left to the right and the graph gets taller and taller. There, since the graph is rising on that interval, we say that the function is increasing. That's negative infinity. And then the graph reaches a high point at negative six. Notice that at this high point, you have a horizontal tangent line. It's a turning point. If a point behaves in such a way that the only direction that point can go either forwards or backwards is down, then we've reached a local max. The graph also rises again from three to nine. And if the graph is rising on that interval, then we say that the function is increasing. So the interval is three to nine. And again, notice that when you get to the high point, okay, you get a horizontal tangent line. And that means at this point, to go forwards or backwards, the point goes down. So you have reached what is called a local max. Sometimes it is called a relative max. Now let's look for intervals where the graph is falling. The graph is falling from the first local max until the graph starts to rise again. Where that graph is falling, that's where the function is decreasing, and that interval is from negative 6 to negative 3. The graph falls again from the second local max forever and ever. And so that interval, we would note as nine to infinity. And look what happened at the turning point. When x equals three, you reach a point such that in order to move in either direction, that point has to go up. When a horizontal tangent exists at a point and it's a low point, we call this the local min. Now let's look at the graph some more. Tangent lines drawn to any point of the graph where the function is increasing. And so we're looking at portions of the graph where I've highlighted in yellow. If you were to draw any tangent line on any point where the graph is rising, this is supposed to look like little tangent lines, you'll notice that it's moving upwards, and if that's the case, then the slope is positive. And if you were to draw a tangent line, any place where the graph is falling, which means the function is decreasing, any place that I draw a tangent line, guess what? It's going down, so the slope is going to be negative. What is the relationship between intervals where the function is increasing and the slope of the tangent line to the graph on that interval? Here I am going to make a sine chart number line for the derivative. 
So I'll do F prime to indicate that I'm talking about the derivative. We notice that at x equals negative 6, the derivative, it has a horizontal tangent line, is going to be 0. And at x equals 3, tangent line is horizontal, so the derivative would be 0 because the slope of the horizontal line is 0. And let's do this again at 9. When x equals 9, the graph has another turning point. So the slope of that horizontal tangent line is also going to be 0. Now, let's match the s, i, g, n's of the derivative. If the graph is rising, it has a positive slope, so the derivative would be positive. If the graph is falling, it would have a negative slope, so the sign of the derivative would be negative. Again, if the graph is rising, the slope of that tangent line anywhere in that interval would be positive, so the derivative would also be positive. And similarly, or I'll repeat again, if the graph is falling, a tangent line drawn to any part of that graph would have a negative slope, which would mean that the derivative is negative. Notice the relationship. The derivative is positive when the graph rises, is negative when the graph falls, is positive when the graph rises, is negative when it falls. And so, looking at this general direction, you see that if the derivative goes from positive to negative at a particular point, you have a local max. If the derivative goes from negative to positive at a particular point, you will have a local minimum. And again, let's look at 9. The derivative is positive, the graph rises. On the other side of the 9, the derivative is negative, the graph falls. That's a high point. You rise to a point and then you fall. So that would be a local max. This understanding sets the groundwork for our first derivative test. So theorem. Suppose f is differentiable on an open interval from a to b. One. If the derivative is positive for all x in that interval, then the function increases on that interval. We illustrated that in the previous graph. If the derivative is negative for all x in that interval, then the function decreases on that interval. And finally, if the derivative equals zero, the function is constant. We got a horizontal tangent line. Example. Find the intervals where f of x equals x plus 1 over x is increasing or decreasing. I've provided for us the graph of the function just so that you can see the stuff we're doing with the derivative matches what we've learned previously in algebra. To find the intervals, let's first begin by determining the domain. The domain of the function says we can't have a zero because that'll give us a zero in the denominator and that would make the function undefined. So the domain of f would be negative infinity to zero. We union that with zero to positive infinity. Next thing we want to do is find critical values. Critical values are where the derivative equals zero or the derivative is not defined. Let's just go ahead and write that. That is, critical values are where derivative equals zero or the derivative does not exist. Either way, we have to find the derivative. So let's do that. The derivative of the function. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 1 over x, that's minus 1 over x squared. If you didn't get that right away, that's okay, but let's go to the margins and work it out anyway. 
If you have y equals 1 over x, you could write that as x to the minus 1. Then when you take the derivative, you bring the minus 1 down front. x to the power of negative 1 minus 1 is minus 2, and that's where we get the minus 1 over x squared. Now let's solve this. Let's do the easier part first. That is, the first derivative does not exist when x equals 0. Why is that? Because it'll give you a 0 in the denominator. Now we have to solve for the possibility where the first derivative equals 0. So we're going to solve where 0 equals the first derivative. Let's solve that. That's 0 is equal to 1 minus 1 over x squared. I would add the 1 over x squared to both sides. To 1 over x squared equals 1. Let's cross multiply. This would be the same thing as 1 equals x squared. When you take the square root, don't forget you need the plus or minus. So this happens at x equals plus 1 and minus 1. Now let's make the sign chart number line for the first derivative. f prime number line, and I'll write x below the number line. We've got three critical values. At negative 1, the derivative equals 0. At positive 1, the derivative equals 0. But what happens at 0? When x is 0, the derivative does not exist. Now let's find the SIGNs that correspond with each interval. I pick a number less than negative 1, say negative 2, and evaluate it in the first derivative. 1 minus 1 over negative 2 quantity squared. That would be 1 minus 1 fourth. And all we are interested is the sign. We don't even need the number, so we know it's going to be positive. Now pick a number between negative 1 and 0. Evaluate negative 1 half in the derivative. So that would be 1 minus 1 divided by negative 1 half squared. So you're going to have 1 over 1 fourth. And so you're going to have 1 minus 4, that would make this a negative. Pick another number in the interval between 0 and 1, like positive 1 half. Since we're squaring the x, the negative and positive don't matter. And then let's pick a number greater than 1, like 2. And so if you need to, just go to the side and say, well, what, what is that? Well, I want the derivative evaluated at 2. That would be 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, which would be 1 minus 1 fourth, and that's 3 fourths. And if I did that, the sign is positive. So the question is, find the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. And so we can say f, the function, not the derivative, the function is increasing on the intervals where the derivative is positive. So that would be from negative infinity to negative 1. And again, from positive 1 to positive infinity. And that matches our graph. We say f. That's the function, not the derivative. f, the function, is decreasing where the derivative is negative. On the sign chart, we see that that happens from negative 1 to 0, and we union that with 0 to positive 1. And if you're curious, we can also find local max and local mins. I'm going to copy the number line again of the sign chart. We had negative 1, 0, and 1. The derivative is 0 at negative 1. Doesn't exist when x equals 0. And the derivative is 0 at 1. So you had positive 
negative, negative, positive. If the derivative is positive, the function rises. If the derivative is negative, the graph of the function falls. This tells us that at x equals negative 1, f, not the derivative, but the function f, has a local max. From 0 to 1, the graph falls, but from 1 to infinity, the graph rises. This tells us then that at x equals 1, f, not the derivative, but the function f, has a what? Local min.